Welcome to Serial Podcast 9. All right. I'm Gerard DiPeralta. <laughs> and I'm Kevin Peterson. And I'm Ryan Benwan. This is Serial Podcast 9, the one where we have a guest. Hey, we didn't really prep this. We should have, but we didn't. So who wants to intro the guest? Um, Someone put your hand up. That's I can't not sure the guest. Yeah. Today. I mean, I know, uh, yeah, I've known the guest the longest. He's, uh, Today. Well, there you go. Uh, we have, yeah. we'll, all, I, I, we'll all do an intro, and then you can splice them together. At the exact same time. Oh. <laughs> no. Everybody say one thing about the guest. We'll go from there. So Gerard, right. say one thing about our guest. He's tall. <laughs> <laughs> good. good. I, I mean, it, you know, I feel that Gerard took my joke because I was going to be like, "Yo, he's got a hairy chest. He smokes mad yeah. darts. He can drink drink a lot of beers." You know. I was going to be like, "He's tall. He's white." And seldom wears a shirt. So. <laughs> there you go. All right, say some profound ass shit. Bro, Ryan, I've true. known him the long time, the longest. Ryan, I've known him the longest. When I first met him, he was a teenager and he drove a Volkswagen. I did. Yeah. yeah. You just took away no, all, but... his, all his credit. <laughs> no, all his I it was... <laughs> in the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. It was a no, nice Volkswagen. like fucking red flag. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. yeah. You like coming Volkswagen, back Gerard. Gerard, do you have stories about going to Volkswagen's dealerships when you're a kid and looking at? I didn't Volkswagen. have a choice in the matter. I was like fucking nine years old, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, I went to a Volvo dealership. I thought it was the coolest shit in the world. I said, yeah, Gerard GTI, actively okay. wanted to drive Volvos when he was younger. So yeah, I mean, I again, I yeah, but anyway. I'm just saying that like out of all the dealerships to go to, Volvo's probably the most boring ass one. You know I would agree. I'll change it and I'll say he is one of the most naturally gifted drivers I've had the pleasure of being friends with. Yes. Well, that is that a, very, a nice thing? That was a very nice thing to say about somebody. Appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> Kevin, Appreciate you. Kevin's punching a wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just slamming monsters. <laughs> yeah, you're not coming with me on any more car trips. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, Kevin's not too far from Kyle. Is, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kyle, same thing. All right, all right. I believe our guest is also one of the people that we mentioned the most and we've never had on the podcast. So it's Carter it's Jackson probably true. from Regina, Regina, Saskatchewan. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's ever Carter, heard of that place. <laughs> hey, a lot I of people I think have. All the time. It's named after fun. Yeah, city that runs is fun. All right, Carter, you're on the podcast. We're happy that you're here. Okay, okay. So here's the deal. So we know you're a good drifter and all, and you like you're into Toyotas. But uh, so what about that Porsche, bro? Tell, tell us about that Volkswagen you got. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Volkswagen, Volkswagen was we're, cool. We're going way back. I had two two Volkswagens actually. Oh, crazy. <laughs> what did you have? Okay, for Volkswagens, what'd you have? Uh, my first car was a '99 Volkswagen Golf, just a 2.0, like not a GTI. Oh. Second oh. one I had was a was a GTI. A Wolfsburg edition or whatever. Oh, okay. like, Wolfsburg. Uh, that's pretty cool then. All right. Yeah. What does it, it mean? Had, like, what does red, that mean? I don't fucking know. It had interior, like the red stitching Recaro interior, whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. That was something. It had like the plaid. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Red plaid. plaid. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's pretty sick. I remember thinking yeah. that was fucking cool when I was yeah. driving yeah, my used... S chassis. Honestly, like, would I ever own another one again? No. But like that car, like, pff, car lasted me 10 years. Drove the living shit out of it, drove it into the ground, yeah. and it like never failed me. Brick yeah, shit house yeah. on the highway, like it just hauled ass. It had this tiny little turbo in it, it just ripped. <laughs> like it was definitely. Is that a, a 1.8 T then, or what was that? No, thing? it was a 2.0 turbo. It hauled. Oh, like it was fuck? fucking, it was fast. It was real fast. Oh, wow. way, you got that dude, way too fast like for like SR. a 21 year old. Crazy. You drove that uh, on a couple of trips to Calgary, I believe, when we used to go to watch drifting yeah. in Calgary. Yeah, yeah the first and the first one, uh, I was like, I don't even know if I could get into the bar yet. I we had to like, I had to use a fake ID to get into the bar. <laughs> I was so <laughs> I was like eighteen and a half years old or something like that. It was crazy. I was so young. Yeah. So that is that. And then uh, Carter, you had a Volkswagen, and then. You got into Nissan, so you went big into Nissans for a while. <laughs> yeah, I had the GTI, uh, bought a 240 for like a thousand bucks off of a friend, and it like barely ran. And I ended <laughs> up, ended up, yeah, it was like one of those cars where you're like, 
all right, it's running like shit. I better drive the piss out of it. And, yeah. and then it started, then it started working better and better and better. Yeah. yeah the Italian this, tune up. Exactly. Right. So I bought this car off a friend for like a thousand bucks. I ended up parking my GTI mm-hmm. and like, I never drove that GTI again. <laughs> and then like six months later I bought the uh, S14 and, and then, uh, Two four. I remember that car. Yeah, the yeah. S fourteen, and then I just yeah, that was the that was the that was it. Two so, Nissans for the for for the for a while for, for a win. while yeah like yeah for, the for win, a yeah. decent amount of time. Who did you buy the first two forty off of? Refresh my memory. <laughs> I bought it off Andy Chung. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, and old it was like hairdresser Andy Chung. Yeah, old yeah, and he like. Didn't know what was going, what was wrong with it, what was going on. So it was just, yeah, it was a, it was a real beater. It had like a, a duct tape or not duct tape, electrical tape, like pinstripe going all the way around it, where like the bumper molding <laughs> was supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, legitimate, yeah. like yeah, that was pretty common, I think, on those. That things. definitely yeah. was pretty common. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I did that on my X7, but I had to do like three layers because the trim is so yeah. thick. So yeah, to, to cover up the holes, you know, when you like take <laughs> the actual trim off, like. So then. Your S14 was a Sylvia, though, correct? Yes. Yeah. S14, Sylvia, SR. factory kooky car, and then uh, it was like an early generation, uh, 2000, or sorry, yeah, 1996, I believe. Classic car you bring in from Japan. It had like an exhaust and those like AVS wheels, the same like five spoke mm-hmm. weird, five like spoke, flowing. Yeah. yeah, those like same wheels that came on every single Nissan that you ever would see coming <laughs> across from Japan. Yeah. So yeah. very run of the mill car, but I mean, I, I, honestly, those are like pretty nice wheels though. <laughs> I, I, I see them every now and then on a car and I'm like, it like takes me back. I'm like, man, those look sick. If are you, you talking about that, the AVS fives or the weird ones that have the, 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 the ones the that like spokes. spoke like flares in and then out get like concaves a little bit. They kind of like roll. It's hard to explain, but they're not the ABS fives seen. that you're thinking, Kevin. They're like the early yeah. ABS. Ones. The spokes are a bit more like tapery. Yeah, and they're like a dual I mean, spoke. That was the the cha- the turning point, pretty much. I mean, the 240 was, but at that point, the it was TSN like, oh, turning points. Yeah, <laughs> and you were really good at drifting. I can't remember. Did you ever drift at Three Flags with everyone, or was that no? Did that that go was away. You know, I, is, is Three Flags like half as good as Six Flags? Is that where they got the name? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man. Yeah, three flags. Three flags. When I think about it now, like it was. Sorry, everyone went to drift, but like I can't imagine driving on that track. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, the little tiny go kart track that barely was wide enough for one vehicle to get around. The Corolla yeah. guys loved it though. Like Corolla Vickers guys, yeah. And yeah. Harrison and Horsley all came out and drove oh, yeah. there and yeah, loved they, it. They it made sense. Guys that could tandem on that track. But yeah, if I remember Cam Klein was trying to would drift his his Toyota sedan on that thing, and it was like it'd just take up the entire road. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, and then Adrian's FD just made way too much power for. It. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you had the S14, and then I feel like you collected S chassis for a while. I had like five at one point at the same time. All Isn't that like a pretty common. Yeah, like when you first get into cars, especially drifting and building cars, you're like, yeah, I'm just gonna buy all these fucking cars because I need this from that car and that from this car and that. You know what I mean? That's like they were they were all complete cars except for one. So one of the cars, well, I had the S14, and then I I bought a 180 that was like a friend of ours, Nick Edwards, that charcoal yeah. one that I had Benwa, full welded in cage, like FD cage, and I had that car that I actually bought like for my girlfriend at the time like so long Romant- ago. oh so romantic yeah. <laughs> yeah she's like oh i, I like this like i like s chassis like there's like nissan's like like all right and then i so i had that one i on, I, I don't know i kind of feel like in my opinion buying any car for your significant other is roman that's like a pretty big gift yeah. no maybe not then but i mean i yeah. feel like you're probably younger and even if yeah. it was a thousand bucks like that's a pretty big gift I don't know how many yeah, yeah, over thousand dollar gifts I've given anybody. That like, car was more than a thousand bucks. Yeah, like it was <laughs> eight, you eight, 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 eight grand. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was, well, it was, like, it was, it was eight grand. Whoa, it was dude, a one. You bought your girlfriend yeah. an eight thousand dollar car. 
I don't know what we know, but Carter is probably an organized crime. (laughs) 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 He works in concrete. (laughs) Quote, unquote. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Uh, Just burying people. Yeah. You'll have the gabagool. Anyway, yeah. (laughs) Eight grand is a real. But your name would have been on the the car, I imagine. So you had that car. Yeah. So, Uh, so, okay. It's like buying a car and putting in your mom's name, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Carter, uh, you got Nick's my, S chassis, which is a good one. You got your S fourteen. Bro, who the fuck? Is I Nick? do. Yeah. Shut I'm up, a, Gerard. I'm oh, imagining yeah. a guy named Nick in my head. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So Jerry. Carter. <laughs> what do you want yeah. me to say? A charcoal one? I listen to you talk about people I don't know all the time, and I do okay, it okay. one I'm time. I get man. mad. I like the tra- I like the tra- I like charcoal. Now I can imagine the car, though. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It was Nick's it was charcoal S13. <laughs> it was actually a really like well put together car. car. <laughs> it had like a, a it had legit G Corp like arrow on it. And it oh, has like sick. a Type X, Type X spoiler and like Euro lines. It was a super nice car, but it had a full welded in cage. And at the time, cops were super bad. So I like didn't dare drive it on the street because I knew it would just get pulled over. So it sat in my garage for like a year and a half. You just hit every then, single window. Yeah. And then <laughs> You'll never see the cage. <laughs> yeah. But serious. I think I drove it one time on the street. And after that, I was like, yes. It's going to get parked. But yeah, I had that one. And then I had, I traded a 240 that I had for another 180. All these cars were right hand drive. All okay. of them were actual 180s. Uh, and then I did an S14 front end and then like wide over fenders on that car and some work VSSDs. And then the last, oh, and then I had a 240, a red one. This one was last left hand drive with a SR swap and a GT 30 on it. I didn't have that car for long. It got sold real quick cause it like never ran. Right. So, um, yeah, it was just like someone else's like problem. Actually, you're going to laugh at this. So we did, we got it on trade for a concrete job. <laughs> no way. Yeah. This guy out at the lake wanted, his son wanted a bunch of work done. He wanted a garage pad done. And my dad was like, he wants to know if you want the car in trade and i'm like fuck yeah of course i do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we took the car on trade <laughs> that's so funny nice. yeah and then i had one that- one car that was like had a spun it had a spun rod bearing or some shit like that so that one was just used for parts but yeah i had a pretty good collection of them just taking up space. how many s chassis have you had in Wait, total didn't you have richard's s chassis as well <laughs> yeah i did i forgot i always forget about that <laughs> car yeah I had that car. Yeah. It sat out of the lake. Are you like still have an S chassis? Don't you like? Oh yeah, I got one rotten in a field somewhere. Like. Oh yeah, yeah. My old S <laughs> fourteen. Oh yeah. My yeah, yeah. my original S <laughs> fourteen is sitting in some guy's like compound right now. It's like <laughs> it's got it's got weeds growing through it. It's like chilling in the field. Uh, it's sitting next to Odd Man Out Performance, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Next time yeah. I'm driving past here, I'll take a picture and send it you guys. <laughs> right it's actually yeah. hilarious. It's like the most barren bone shell that's just like destroyed both quarters yeah. are like piled in it's got one <laughs> over fend on it i had a tire d-lamb at dui took the entire side of the quarter oh. panel out and just <laughs> demolished brand new like origin type trees yeah put them on uh, so how many chances have you had in total probably baker's dozen i think i'd yeah. probably i'd i think nine or ten nine or oh. ten yeah yeah, that's probably it's, almost more than I've had Cressidas. Like some of them I had for a while. Some of them I just like just got on like weird deals. The one S14 that I got where I ended up doing an S14 front end on it, a friend of mine owned it. And at the time he like wasn't working or whatever in this car was just sitting in his garage. It didn't move. It needed like some work done to it. I had a 240 that I just put like winter tires on and put like diamond racing wheels. It was fully <laughs> ready to go. It was like a winter ripper. It was the best car that you could go out and start that thing in like minus 40. And it was starting every fucking time. I asked him if he wanted trade for it so he could like get around. I'm like, you know, I'll throw some plates on it. You can drive it until the plates burn off and whatever. And yeah, then I ended up having the parts because I had like all these S chassis at the same time, I had yeah. the parts to fix the 180. So I had the 180 fixed in like a weekend. And then I just 
had a 180 for you know like i think i paid like twenty five hundred dollars for the (laughs) for the 240 back in the day so i had this 180 that had like a bunch of parts and shit on it it often feels like saskatchewan at least when i lived there was very much like there were only a few people that really knew what they were doing with stuff so like People would often bite off more than they could chew, or the car projects yeah. would just get abandoned. Yeah. Like my, yeah. selling at selling at loss frequently. If, yeah, I feel like that's pretty common even today. Is so. it? Yeah, yeah. but it but feels like, like if you're in the Lower Mainland, there's so many people who are also into it who are going to scoop up the deal. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I like, think like also at this time, like this is when in Juku Racing and all those companies out of the states were becoming like super big. It was just like the availability to buy parts was so easy now before that it was like you couldn't just go on the internet and just like click buy now and like have parts come in to your house next week or whatever it was it was a little bit more of a pain in the ass but these places had like everything you could want and more yeah yeah. you know at the click of a button right so i think that's what happened with this car was this guy like bought it he never really got it running right and instead of taking parts off and going back to his closest like to OEM as you could. He just kept on buying more parts and more parts for it to be like, oh, maybe this is what it is. Maybe (laughs) this is what it is. Never got it figured out. It's kind of funny because like afterwards, so I ended up having to take that that 180 to DUI one year because we spun a a rod bearing in my S14 right after I had built the motor. I did like bottom end, full like balanced and blueprinted like motor. And then uh, I put this back watch on it and then afterwards, when I took it, when I took like the motor, like the block back to the guy that was building the motor, the shop, the, the he like bearing. weighted it and he was like, holy fuck, like the pressure plate is like so out of weight that it was like rolling an egg down a fucking like, out of balance. Like, yeah, it was yeah. just like yeah. lop, lopsided, right? So that's what took that out. But yeah, so anyways, I had this S14, the motor just went. So this is like back when, I don't know, maybe we were like, 24 25 whatever and it was like oh if you needed to get something done you just got it done we were like fuck it we'll take all the parts off the s14 put them on the s13 or on the 180 and we had to leave for dui the next day like me and evan had just went out to start tuning this is at like probably supper time maybe six seven got home diagnosed that the knock was internal like bottom end maybe like around like 11 decided to steal all the parts off of it put it to put this other car together and had a couple hours of sleep and then just like packed the car up and left at, you know, nine, 10 o'clock in the morning the next day. <laughs> didn't, t- yeah. didn't, didn't tune it, didn't do nothing. Didn't know what exactly was wrong with it. But like, as we started like taking these parts off, you know, just doing like boost leak tests and this and that, we like came across so many things that were stupid wrong things. and stupid things. Like for one, it had like a, one of those like Freddy uh, intake yeah. manifolds the holes where they like hold the fuel rail, you know, it wasn't oval or anything. It was just like a direct perfect hole. Right. So the fuel rail was actually bent and it was leaking on all the like O-ring sides oh, like, on all the edges. Right. So that was a huge thing that, that we noticed. So we ovaled out the holes. I got it to where it was like nice and straight and lined up going through all this stuff that this guy had bought and just put on and like, it never really fixed the car, or, you know, like brought it back to where it needed to be. Ended up, we were like, got the car good to go, got there. And then I thought the car had a diff in it. It didn't have a diff. So we pulled the diff out, drove <laughs> to some guy in West Kelowna and he welded it that day. Got back to the sh- <laughs> man, like, got back to, and this is like, we were, you know where we all stayed in the like campsite up on top of the mountain or whatever? Yeah. Like those moose? couple of times. Yeah. The moose. Yeah. I'm on the trailer the morning of pulling this diff out, going to this guy's place and then coming back. And then we never had time to tune it. But luckily the guys that came with me, the guy, the one of the guys was F bar. So we're like out on the highway doing like highway pulls, getting this car dialed in right before the event, <laughs> right before we're going out on track. And I think about that stuff so, now and I'm just like, yeah. I would never fucking do that. I Watching want me. everyone to know that this is what it is to be from Saskatchewan and to be into cars. Everything that Carter just said is for like perfect paints a picture. My, you know, like my S chassis that I drove was 
someone put it in an auto like wrecking yard, but it was still playable. So someone pulled it out of the auto wrecking yard and put it back together. And yeah, you don't have at the time there wasn't shops that you could go to the most knowledgeable S chassis guys in the province we're all of our friends. Like they knew yeah. more than, yeah. than the other people. And yeah. the most knowledgeable tuner is our friend that drove RX sevens who went to, is an engineer that just yeah. taught himself tuning. So like we all ran power FCs for a while. Cause it was the <laughs> only thing that people really knew how to tune. There was yeah. no, there was no serial nine. There was no like <laughs> shop down the street. There's no, like when you guys tell your story about being here and even when I'm, Moved to Vancouver, I was like, everything's at your fingertips here. Everything <laughs> in Saskatchewan, you had to like bust your ass to do and figure it out yourself. It was, I mean, I feel like that's and, probably pretty parallel with a lot of like the the places in the U.S., right? Like a lot of those places are pretty butt fuck nowhere. Like a lot of the dudes, yeah, are, yeah, like, building cars or yeah, you know, yeah. Like, I noticed yeah, that. I mean, you, you got the, you got the internet now, though. That yeah. is one. Yeah, I know for sure, for sure, for sure, yeah. But I remember, yeah. like, we did, I mean, we did the same thing. I mean, like building Kevin's X7. Well, there were, I mean, like, that, that's speakers. what I was going to say is like, I thought you were what, what I thought Ryan was going to say. But like maybe now thinking about it after, like, doesn't quite make sense that Ryan would say that was like, yeah, that's like every drift event, man. Like, yeah, that's every drift event, like that's you're just true. busting your balls to get something done that yeah. you put off or like, yeah. you know, and then or you yeah. didn't really know it was a problem. How many times I like yeah. I've like taken perfectly fine cars parked them and they taken them to go to a drift event and there's you have this like crazy problem happen on the way yeah. you're just like yeah oh my god like one of those things where you like you just like space out and just keep pushing through it yeah over yeah. and yeah. over and over again <laughs> yeah and then you get to the point where you're like what the fuck am i doing yeah how, how are you gonna manage yeah I mean, yeah, we did uh, water pumps, water pumps on the one JZ at the fucking Chevron in Surrey. Like, yeah, and then, yeah. Okay. And then like those valves, we did like, yeah, valve. we did. We I did, like, do, valves, I did like, do valves on my one J the night before uh, uh, an event at what was that place called again? PGP? Dude, it wasn't even like the night before. We didn't even like go to bed. I swear, it was like we were up continuously, and then <laughs> we were just like, all right, well, like we like the car seems to be fine. Let's just go, like. Yeah, so, I remember that. We pulled uh, over and we're like, is it good? I don't know. Is it good? Let's just go. Have Let's you guys just keep going, yeah. <laughs> have you guys ever heard of the story of uh Vickers going to DUI last time when like him and Dev Quinn and all the like mellow guys went and Vickers drove his car. And Vickers brought all the parts necessary to do anything <laughs> and everything to that car. So he ended up blowing a head gasket on the way there. Outside and, of Banff, uh, right? Outside of Banff. And our two friends, the same guy that I'm talking about that tune my car evan and bj just had happened to be passing him at the same time and they pulled over and he's like fucking blue head gasket i guess i'll just like go change get it. a tote yeah so they literally changed the head gasket like decked this decked his motor on the side of the fucking highway <laughs> like with like a file and like put the car back together <laughs> like got that's that to, toyota life buddy got him yeah. to do got him to dui and then he drove his car all weekend long and then he drove home after that dude that's so sick <laughs> yeah. yeah they weren't traveling together or anything they just yeah. happened to like be passing just you know? dave through and through yeah, yeah. just like dave. shitting horseshoes yeah <laughs> all the way through life but that's also BJ and Evan always having to be the two guys that help everyone fix, fix their ev- shit. Everyone fucks up. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're they're your Eric, you know, the guy yeah. that's like more. <laughs> except there's two of them, and one of them learned how to tune cars. And yeah. I was gonna there's make like them my, say my the difference. Eric and Gerard. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I was gonna say the the difference for both is like Gerard when you told me you had an automotive. Background, I was like, no fucking way, because none of my friends have an actual automotive background, like oh, yeah. Carter or his concrete for a living. Yeah, Evan <laughs> is Evan is Art. an engineer, and Jordan Hall cleans carpets now. You know, like, and he yeah. an SR and a Miata. So it is a very, you know, Jesse Extra does tattoos and happens to have yeah. a bunch of like, it's just a, none of us fucking knew, but you yeah. had like a very significant 
automotive yeah. background that none of us none of our friends were actually mechanics and we didn't like the mechanics yeah. I think. You, you were like the guy that <laughs> we were all wishing that we had sitting there yeah pretty much. when i yeah, just yeah. give when like, I, we're just like give us one of just give us one of those guys like please. yeah yeah <laughs> when i met both of you i was like holy fuck i didn't know people like this existed <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's cool you eventually carter decided Nissans weren't for you and you got into Toyotas, which is what brings us way more on top of this. Yeah. Um, well, I always had soft spot for like Supras, but I just knew that probably wasn't like a vehicle that I could, you know, get a hold of at the time because I had all these other vehicles. And I think me and BJ, the same guy that was always helping out, we were always talking about like Toyotas and just this and that. Started talking about JZX one day and Started looking into them a little bit more and then realized this car has like, you know, everything that I want and need and more, you know, <laughs> and they come five speed. Like if you can find a factory, you know, yeah. five speed is exactly what I want. So I started so what, what year is that? When was that? Um, I own that car for nine years, I think. So nine, Holy nine shit, years. The ago. JZX 100 you own for nine years? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I think That's I, crazy I, long time. That is insane. I know, right? Nine years I had that car. And that motherfucker still had a stock intake fucking filter and stock, shit. Like, stock everything. The only thing that went Did this guy have a stock steering wheel, I swear? Yeah, it, yeah. It had, it had a stock steering wheel for a while. I admit, like, Stock before, seat till the day he sold it. Stock seat till the day <laughs> I sold it. It did have a stock steering wheel in it when I took it to when I took it to yeah. Super D the first year. The yeah. first time when I, yeah, when I was dead. Super D, no angle kit, no nothing. When it was just blue? Like, it was red, the first Super D. Yeah. The second Super D, that's, it was yeah. blue. Yeah. That's so beyond me. People yeah. probably <laughs> fucking choke. You're like like totally schooling them, but you got like stock seat, stock air box, stock then, steering wheel. Yeah. Then my, <laughs> Those steering wheels are like, terrible. Oh, they're horrible. It's like it's like driving a, a big ass school bus with like extra cushion on it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, Benoit was dream. like taking, Benoit was taking pictures out in the field and the one guy was like, what do you say? He's like, what the Volvo? Fuck? That guy's like drifting a yeah. Volvo or something. Dude, no, the guy was so amped. He was like fucking rocking the Volvo. I'm like, that's a Toyota, man. <laughs> <laughs> this was so before. Like, yeah, like, nobody had any clue. Yeah, yeah. One so, hundreds weren't common knowledge for people, and yeah. How it came to be with the one hundred is, I started kind of looking, just like you know, on all sites back there, GooNet or GoNet, whatever it was, those places. And then at the time, Spencer Hogg, oh, he had that, he, yeah, yeah. he had that like boss import or whatever the hell. He was very selective with who he would like help out. You know, he just like <laughs> import, he imported when he wanted to import. You know. And so he was like, yeah, I'll help you find one or whatever. He'd send me a couple of pictures and then I'd be like, oh, yeah, like, what about this one? And he's like, ah, oh, it's gone already. You know, it was like that classic, like, chasing game. And I remember the one night when the, the JZX that I had came up, he messaged me in, like, the middle of the night. And he's like, this one is probably the best deal you're going to get. It has coilovers, 17-inch Model 5s, and whatever else. It was a Series 1, you know, but it was like 6500 bucks. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right, yeah. pull the trigger, pull the trigger. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he, he bought it and then, uh, ended up getting it shipped over. I think I, by the time we got it shipped to my house, I got it like dropped off right in my driveway. I think it was at my house, but for like $9,000 roughly, like, no, it wasn't honestly like plated yeah, everything. So 6,000 like, us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, you know. Seller for forty, some. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was gonna say, I was gonna say. I mean, well, you also painted that. it like five times. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it went through a lot of, of phases, that's for sure. But a lot of them, like, um, mostly, you know, it was like wheels, color, changing back and forth. It wasn't until the car was silver and we went to final boat that I really started digging into it and doing all the like necessary shit, all the arms that you guys had and kind of like correcting a bunch of the stuff that for such a long time, it was just like, ah, it works kind of, I guess. No, that car was great. Never failed me like eight, nine years. Yeah. Uh, I think the only thing I changed was, uh, Oil. I got a re well oil. <laughs> regular 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 maintenance and I got a replacement Exeti clutch. Like just the disc. Yeah, like a stock one. 
the oh, stock disc. one, yeah. Just the disc. I didn't even change the pressure plate out. Yeah. I was gonna say, okay, so I got a question for you. When you first drove the JZX, what mm -hmm. were what were your feelings and what were the thought like? I'm what? honestly, I think one of the first people I talked to was you. I remember because yeah. I I remember messaging you way back in the day. Because one of the yeah. first things that we started talking about after I got the car, I did the diff bushings very, very early on. Yeah. And it was like right when you guys came out with them. I had the car for a little while, I think maybe like a year or so. It was a fun car, but it had so much, it just felt play. so sloppy. and play, Yeah, the play and like every time you'd floor it or like clutch kick it, you could hear it like clunking and making all these weird noises and shit. And then, yeah, we talked about diff bushings and subframe or whatever. And that chain, like doing that, those things, man, just changed the whole way the whole car reacted and yeah in every way it was crazy was it uh was it everything you thought it would be the drifting like drifting when you first drifted the jzx compared to the s chassis like was it um it was like, a lot you... different the the s chassis is like i don't know just the steering and stuff it was so snappy and quick and the s the jzx was just like so slow and just like flowy just kept going forever you know it just no matter what you didn't like once it was sliding it was just it was just sliding you were there for for the ride basically <laughs> yeah it was completely yeah. different but it yeah. felt it was nice it feels like wish. the like jzx sloppiness and like you're there for the rideness goes with fork of the 1j though yeah you know what i mean yeah. like it feels like you need the car to be so snappy when you have the sr or you yeah. know like yeah, yeah like you can you can just afford to like let the bushings slop around as you like hammer down on the one day, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, it was a lot of fun to drive and it was awesome. It was a four door. I drive that car everywhere. We go for lunch, me and all the buddies and we just pile in, go where we were going. You know, it's a, a great all around car. Never failed. Didn't need anything for safety. Just like put it through safety and drove it park yeah. it every winter or every like fall start yeah. it back up in spring and just like continue to do that for <laughs> eight years like, so that's that's a testament for all you except all you, you paint it every two years in the winter <laughs> so the yeah so the first so it came silver and then i just at the time got into doing vinyl because i just i had all i had the s chassis like all the s chassis and i wanted to change the colors of them all the time like i just wanted like at one point you know the the ch S chassis was white, so then I wanted it blue. And then at this time, we were like a team, so we all wanted to match, and we were all blue or whatever. So I started doing vinyl, and then that's kind of how all the color changes came to be. So I went silver, and then you know I vinyl wrapped it red, and then from red, maybe now I want it blue. Then I did the like white wheels, so just like changing stuff all the time, but not really having to dedicate all the extra time to like doing prep work and shit mm -hmm. it's like pulling the sticker off and then putting the new one on just a different color so it was yeah. it was easy it was an easy way to get a different look out of it and not have to like dedicate a huge amount of money more than anything it took took a long time to do the vinyl yeah, it wrap, definitely takes some time did you wrap it red the first time yeah it was vinyl wrap red and then it was vinyl wrap blue and then from the blue i peeled it off and then Painted uh, that's when we did we, well it was still so, silver so all we did was we sanded it down and then re-clear coated it with the gold flake in it oh we're yeah clear. and then yeah so like then we went to final boat and uh it got all the you know door damage and bullshit and after doing the re-clear coat with the flake it was almost impossible to try and match that afterwards mm -hmm. so eventually it just got to be the point where i was like i'm this car is too many different silvers. We need to need to get it a solid color now. And then that's where the gold came from. Weed sheep, buddy. Yeah. Champagne, whatever you want to call it. Actually, in the <laughs> in the like paint book, it's called champagne gold. Champagne yeah, gold a, effect. <laughs> old Camry color. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was going oh. for. Oh. So what I was gonna say oh. a while ago is it's a testament to like a JZX reliability and and uh, durability. Cause I think because now like a lot of people have jzx's or getting into jzx's whatever and they you know they they get it and they see it you know it's a cool car everyone's drifting this and that but it's like until you talk to people like 
people at Ibiza that drop that drive them and drift them relentlessly. And then Carter, who's had the same fucking car for eight, nine years, same fucking engine, same stock, everything. Like you don't really know what you're buying is actually that as well. Like the coolness is one thing, but then you're actually buying like a really, really, really good fucking vehicle. Oh yeah. You know? hey, I mean, that car, that car was a perfect testament of it. Like, I didn't change the seats, you know. I didn't do anything. Yeah. It had the factory seat belts. <laughs> it had, yeah. it had all the factory shit. It had a factory yeah. e brake. The first time when we went to Final Boat, that was the first I time I had this. ran the like shift shift button. Oh, the, the like, drift so, button. Before that, I push. I just push the button every single time and then let yeah. it down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest yeah. thing about Carter and drifting is like. <laughs> I can't even really remember this, but you're at final bout, you're in your seat and the guy's like looking at your car and he's just like, is that a stock seat? And he's like, yeah. is that what I should write down for your seat? You're like, yeah, it gives me something to concentrate on while I'm driving. I got to focus on not being thrown around. You know? like, Carter still shreds, but it's like everything around him is like to the detriment, you know, it's like, oh, I, I didn't even have the thing to pull a button. You know, I, I had to <laughs> always push the button. I think you even told me, Carter, and I could be wrong. You're like, sometimes I have to hold on to the door so I don't slide too far in one direction in my seat. Like, it's, you know, Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I got to I got to the point where I learned how, like to lock my knees to the sides yeah, of the to dash the sides, to, like, yeah. to like hold me in place. <laughs> That's when you're a passenger. You, oh, yeah, you're drifting yeah. a luxury car, yeah. With the JZX, yeah. it was, like, it works so good. And, like, the with the R154, like, the gears are so long that you could literally drive that car with one hand and be, like, arm out the window, just, like, <laughs> letting it steer on its own because it just, it was so effortless. So I can for sure picture that happening where it's just, like, yeah. one hand manning it. <laughs> Plus, it's, like, the, I always thought about it, too, like, if I was gonna put seats in there, I would want I would want Reclining. the interior to match still. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, okay, how do I match the series one blue suede like stripe seats? Like, yeah, you, exactly. You know? Yeah, you're not you, you completely strip them out and use the material as inserts <laughs> on your that's some like Volkswagen or <laughs> shit. Like yeah, you know I mean if you got the centers recovered. I mean, honestly, that's yeah. kind of the thing with me too. Like I'm building the Crestler right now, and I have two uh bride uh zero CSs, a you know, the new whatever mid mid back ones or whatever yeah and it's like they're cool and everything but it's like i'm literally taking out like this like cool ass brown interior and putting yeah. in two black seats i was like at least the centers could match or something would be kind of cool or if the whole seat fucking matched that'd be really cool yeah that was always my idea behind it it was i would have i would have done it but i just yeah there was you had a was. racing seat in any of your cars i had two status like gold like blue carbon seats like in my garage for two years that were supposed to go in the jzx and they never put them in they just <laughs> they just yeah they were like the alcatan like alcatan. suede yeah. Uh, Al yeah that with the like blue stitching and they were like blue carbon they were the craziest seats like that and they just sick. yeah they just, but they were the gtx fix backs and i was always like oh man i'm gonna lose like the reclining and all this shit <laughs> you're a big dude too you know you it, oh. Yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. right do some custom mounts if you got to fix back on that thing that's the thing my head would have been through the roof like i need basically like short rails or like just like solid mount rails that were just solid mount rails around. yeah exactly yeah. or you can just do the you can get them pretty low in those cars they just have to make everything and that's the thing yeah uh, you know I don't have like a guy on hand that can yeah. weld or anything. I mean, you don't I don't have a Jerry now, or a Dustin now, or now, you know, I, now I do. Now I can, now now I can do, get yeah. someone yeah, to do that, you. you know, but before it was like, Hey, DJ or someone, you know, can you think you can come over here and maybe try and help me out? It's, just the availability just wasn't there yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say the other lesson to take away from Carter, which I've always very much appreciated Carter you never built your cars. It was never like you got a car and you're like, now I need to build it. You were like, I'm just going to drive it. And yeah, then you would yeah. build it as you went. Most dudes think they're great drivers and they need a car to match. But you were just like, no, I'm just going to like drive this thing as best as I can until it absolutely requires me to do something to make it. A hundred percent. Like That was basically. That's probably the way to live your life too, you know? <laughs> that was exactly. Yeah. That was everything that the S14 was basically like 
I did small modifications here and there, but like I did everything slowly as I just like got used to the car to the point where I had, you know, like power FC upgraded injectors, the S 15 turbo, you know, like all that shit, the like basic run of the mill stuff. And it was tuned and it worked great. I drove that. It had Driftworks angle kit, the full like GeoMaster angle kit mm-hmm. in it. So it was like dialed. The car worked amazing. And I drove it every day. Like I drove it to work. I drove it to go get food. Like I drove it everywhere, you know. So I knew that car like the back of my head. Like mm-hmm. any corner that I wanted to drive or like any corner I wanted to drift, I know exactly how to do this, right? It, just because I got yeah. so used to it. And then... I had the dumb idea. I was like, you know what? Maybe it's time to crack open this motor and really dip into it. So I did like cams and head gasket and this and that. And then I put it all together. Then I decided, man, maybe you should just do the bottom end too. And at that time, you know, you could, I think it cost, I think it cost me like 3,500 bucks to build the whole motor, like top to bottom. Like, and that was including machining, you know, balance and blueprinted. Like I had like the sheets from the yeah. shop to do like all the balancing and everything. It was fully built. And, uh, and then, yeah, we took it out, had that issue happen. And then, no, the first time was when I just cracked it open and did the top end. And then we spun the rod bearing second time, put it all back together after doing the balance and blueprint. And, uh, we did a brand new OEM, uh, oil pump and the gear inside the oil pump failed and pretty common be something yeah and so that motor or blue spun another bearing so <laughs> third, third time around with the same motor and like two new two different cranks uh put it all back together and then it just never ran right and after that when i got the jzx i was like you know what i'm not going through that again I'm going to leave this car exactly how it is. It doesn't need anything to work. You know, it works great. So I just didn't touch it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to have a car that was just like failing me nonstop. I wanted to drive. I wanted to enjoy it. You know, I wanted to be able to go wherever I wanted to go and not have to be like, Oh man, like what if this car fucking fails me again? That's a pretty common thing in the, in the, you know, in the world we live in. People just get frustrated and just, Lots yeah, I'm gonna make sure newer and more reliable, and you know. Yeah. Yeah, but you also got to make sure you keep the magic in it. I believe is the same. <laughs> it's the thing, man. Don't open that shit up. Yeah. 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 And the magic, but so I mean, the magic still if, in there. If you got an egg-shaped clutch, you know, like you're gonna wreck some shit. Yeah, yeah. So. Set me on a spiral. <laughs> <laughs> I also enjoy that it's like you got the. In Western Canada, for sure, and I won't speak for other parts of Canada or the world, but the moment you get a Toyota in your origin story of having a Toyota, Gerard magically appears and he's in the picture <laughs> somehow. It's like yeah. Gerard's the first person. And like one of my earliest memories of the Aristo is Gerard sitting in a campground at DUI yeah. making fun of the rear window. And it's like, huh. <laughs> That guy, like anyone was, who touched huh, a Toyota, was guy. in the vicinity of a Toyota, <laughs> was like yeah. serial nine. Like, and that was just it. Like, you go Saskatchewan, people are there like, and then I'm going to get the serial nine stuff. And it's like, I don't know what that is because I drive a Nissan. But as soon as <laughs> you are in the realm of Toyota, you unlock the mysterious Gerard and he <laughs> appeared. Yeah, that's that's so funny that you say that because like, <laughs> That last year when we were at DUI. That's um, when I met you. We had the S14. Yeah. And I had had the JZX for like a year, maybe not even. And you had the Stasia. And you were like drinking coffee out of the sunroof the one morning. You were <laughs> <Yeah>. like. <laughs> and and I th- Kevin, Kevin, you were there too, weren't you? Yeah. Kevin no, I don't think he was there that year. No. no. I swear, yeah, I, I brought the Stasia and camped. Okay. Maybe, maybe it was a different year. The year when they... They had the rattlesnakes over in Devon and Curtis Goats. I swear you were there for yeah. that year. I was there for that year. Yeah. Yeah, you were there for that year. But yeah, I remember like Gerard being there when he had the Stasia and you like rolled in super late at night. You had one of your I can't remember who else was with you with the with the Toyota. I think it was Maybe. Jude. Yeah, yeah, that that might have been I don't know. correct. Jude is there? I no, I went, I went in the Stasia by myself, man. Uh, I think someone I think I maybe the only Alex Lee. he took the motorcycle. Uh, 
someone else rolled in like at the same time. Maybe they weren't, you guys weren't together and it was just like a coincidence or perfect I think I timing met Alex or whatever. There. I met Alex there that time. Yeah. You did meet I, Alex there. Yeah. Yeah. But it was funny because the last, like after the event, you hung out for the day and it was yeah. like raining. And I just remember us chilling under the tent, like hanging out and shooting the shit. And yeah, yeah. It's just like talking about random shit. And yeah, we were having yeah, that like sounds a, like Jerry. A little yeah. combo a rain, about the Jay's and That feels very rare. Yeah. 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 I mean, you never um, knew what you were going to get when you were on top of them at that lost <laughs> moose lodge. Yeah. Like some di- some days you would wake up and it would be crystal clear. And then you would drive down to the track and it'd be pouring rain. And then other days it would be super shitty up top and then you would go down and there would be nothing going like no rain or no nothing. Right. So it just all depend. I want to say, so I thought, and I could be very wrong. The first time you actually met Kevin, it was when they rolled into Regina to pick you up for final bout. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's what I thought. Well, that that's, that's the first time that, that we met. I just remember Kevin like being at DUI. Like, I don't, remember us like really talking i just yeah, remember i just like, remember you know, him like you know being, when there's like 30 people that are all yeah, out together you don't yeah. really meet anybody you know yeah that's exactly what i meant no th- me i the first time i met kevin was when when we became best buddies when we started just <laughs> slam slamming beers in a on a fucking voyage across west uh, or east canada or wherever <laughs> going to the gravel parking lot <laughs> And that was the best. You guys came and slept at my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All you guys came and crashed. I believe the story goes, and I wasn't there because I flew to that final bout. But wasn't it? You, you made the smart decision. Yeah. One of you was having a beer at ten in the morning, I believe, and I don't remember which one it was. Carter, when I you were loading I the trailer, looked at Carter and was like, "Hey, you want to drink a beer?" Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, like <laughs> yeah. Wait, are you talking about when we loaded we were loading up yeah 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 oh yeah yeah you had a bunch of beers in the cooler already in the box of the truck and yeah, you're like do you want one yeah you like had a beer in your hand you're like too early for a beer or some fucking random like one liner i'm like De- no like yeah i definitely want a beer let's go <laughs> <laughs> let's get this shit going <laughs> I remember by the time uh, we were at Final Bout and you guys went to the Mexican restaurant and then you mm. came back and you were, but uh, maybe it was, it was before that, maybe because when you came back, you were all drunk. But yeah. I remember <laughs> you and Kevin and were like talking and I was like, hey, can you guys just stop drinking for like one minute? And Gerard's like, right? And I was like, oh, I'm in the responsible <laughs> camp with Gerard. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, very we, vivid we, memory of we didn't have, being very responsible. <laughs> we didn't have any responsibilities. We were literally sitting in the back seat of this truck, just like driving across North America. It was just yeah. like, yeah. fucking, what else are we supposed to do? Shoot um, the shit. But that is a that is a fun story of yeah. You joined the Serial Nine Drift Team for Final Bout, yeah, and the first time like, you guys on the way really, there. On yeah. the way there. Yeah. And the first time you drive together is at Final Bout. Yeah. 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 You guys showed up in the middle of the night, was it? It was, was, it was like, like midnight in yeah, your 1.30 like or something. Midnight. You were drifting around. Yeah. I was out for beers with someone. Some, like, I, refi- you were like, yeah. Like, we showed up to the shop and then like 10 minutes yeah. later, you showed up. You guys, you guys left your vehicle where like our shop space yeah. was. Yeah. Because in the morning when we came back, uh, I remember Gerard having to cut out like a bumper support or something. You were you needed like <laughs> yeah. a zip disc yeah. and you, yeah, yeah, so we like shit. we chopped it up there and then and then loaded loaded up the car and yeah that was my rebar up. yeah I had to cut the rebar in, into pieces yeah yeah but yeah yeah, yeah that's I mean, what it was <laughs> loaded up and on our yeah, way that was sweet <laughs> yeah. that was sweet that was awesome. it was it was super funny too because the next day when everyone showed up for like work. Like all the other people that are at this shop space, there's just like a this fifty wedge. foot, fifty <laughs> yeah. foot wedge with a big F four fifty attached to it, and like <laughs> all these flashy ass cars. And I remember the one dude was just like, "What the fuck is like? What is going on? Like, <laughs> yeah. he's this old old head dude into muscle cars and shit, just having a, a full meltdown at not knowing what was on the trailer." <laughs> 
why there's so many Volvos on that trailer. Yeah. <laughs> why is why is that car pink? <laughs> uh, so you go to final bout, you guys drive together. I feel like at that final bout, were there a yeah, lot we of 100s that, at that I, final? I feel like no. we went through that Two. sundown or town, and that was like the cr- still to this day feels like the craziest thing I've ever experienced in my life. Which part? What? What? When we were in that, like, oh, that down crazy down. town with the like sirens. Like, oh, the oh, sirens oh, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that that little town was like some wrong turn type. Yeah, movie yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah, Real exactly. creepy. <laughs> yeah, that, like on oh, like man. I'm like a fully white guy, and I was yeah. to be there. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you're a fully white guy with a pink car. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a pretty <laughs> Who, liberal, who's really guy. good at yeah. roller skating. <laughs> Blading. Blading. Yeah. Both. <laughs> you can do both. Apparently, yeah, I went roller skating. I'm apparently not too terrible at roller skating. You didn't even have to tie him up. Uh, anyway, it is uh, different. You guys go to find about. There was two. Who was the other 100? Rich, oh, uh, Stone. Rich Whiteman. Oh, Rich, Rich, Rich Whiteman. Whiteman. Yeah, Whiteman. Okay. Yeah, that dude so you, tread. <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely. His car and my car were like literal Complete polar opposites. Polar opposites. Yeah. yeah. Full build, stripped, gutted, everything, like wide over fenders, zero degrees, gnarly setup versus a completely bone stock car with like five degrees camber. (laughs) Slammed, yeah. Yeah, slammed, yeah. Street style, I believe. Dude, I think shredded though. I know. I remember him doing like backies and it's like, I remember him doing a whole lap with the hood up. So you're at final bout. You guys drive together. Uh, clearly, things go well enough that you continue to be comrades. Well, it's uh, funny because it feels like all the things that Carter said before getting the JZX and then like having the JZX, but sort of like before solidifying that relationship with Serial Nine, all already very much aligned with Serial Nine. You know, so yeah, yeah. Like I mean, I. I knew who you guys were, like obviously followed you guys and stuff like that. Everything you guys were about was pretty much what I always had really kind of been about. I wasn't really too worried about, you know, zero degrees and like maximum mm-hmm. grip. Like I liked cars that look cool and stylish and like simple, but aggressive. I've always loved just like solid cars. I, the whole fat, like the whole phase of, uh, like crazy livery stuff. I've always loved the fact of like our cars, even when you guys did do like uh, decals and stuff on them, they're just like very, very subtle, you know, mm-hmm. I've always loved that. That's one, like one thing that's always really st- stood out, but no, like everything you guys are about was, and it's it very, it like solidified it so much at final boat because then we started driving and I was just like, man, like, this is like everything I'm into. This is all I want to do. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, Carter, you're the one of few people. Like, because I would say you got into drifting a little bit, not later actually, but like from when most of us in Saskatchewan, like the core group of who our friends are, got into it. You yeah. were like a little bit on the tail end of that. So you yeah. never really had. It felt like, and I could be wrong. You had Street Junkie that you were a part of. Yeah, but. When you really started traveling, you were always like kind of on your own. It felt like I remember you went to Super D, mm-hmm. and yeah. we we won't get into the details, but some things changed <laughs> about who your driving team was, and uh, yeah. you know you kind of had to go out there and drive by yourself almost. You were yeah. always uh, uh, I, I will say a lone wolf at all these events. You loved driving, you loved going places, but the yeah. time for that for everyone else had passed. You're the one guy that stuck it out. Yeah, there were some tourists in there and then Carter was like a lifer, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, honestly, I just like always had like this like drive to want to like go to different places and experience, you know, like driving in different settings or whatever. I didn't really think yeah. about the whole aspect of, oh, I need to have like this whole crew of people there. It's like, I just wanted to go there and drive. And like, also yeah. I just wanted to go to these places to like, you know, test like my skill against other people, you know, just like, I wonder if I'll be able to like drive with these guys or whatever, you know, and then all of a sudden you're just doing it. You're just like, man, like, like, this is, this is what it's all about. Driving like 20 some out. Like, I think the first time I went to California, I think it took us 29 hours. We had a slight detour, got to one of the border crossings and it was closed. We had to 
backtrack and go to a different oh, one. And that it was just like, yeah, me and my girlfriend at the time. So we were just like along for the ride, just like <laughs> driving literally <laughs> across, <laughs> basically almost down to Mexico, you know, for, for Gina, <laughs> I Saskatchewan. Did. I do love that because I remember when you got there, you were just like, man, LA is huge to this day. Oh, yeah. I remember when we first got there the first time, like I was just pulling into the outskirts and the lady that we were staying, like the, the Airbnb that we had booked, classic, like stupid mistake, just like not, you know, thinking about going to a different place, like a different city and if there will be parking. And yeah. the place that we stayed was in this place called Eagle Rock, I think. Anyways, it was kind of in the valley a little bit. And the house that we were staying at was on a cul-de-sac. So there's no yeah. parking on the street or anything. So yeah. there was no place for us to put this truck and trailer. It just so happened this lady, her neighbor worked at some like studio place. So we ended up parking the via- the truck and trailer and like driving my car the whole time we were in California. But she was like, oh, yeah, let me know when you're in or pulling in you know and uh and then we can touch base from there or whatever so i call yeah, her and i'm yeah. like oh yeah like well you know we should be there shortly she's like you're at least three hours away still <laughs> and then that's when i <laughs> that's when i really really realized like oh my god like <laughs> this is way yeah. out of my element the, yeah you were like there's so many lanes on the road i remember yeah. i saw you totally. you were like why are the roads so um, big Total mayhem. I'm 10 man. minutes away. Honey, you're three hours away from Legit. Yeah. That's like Regina. Yeah. It's like, oh, uh, I'll see you in 15 minutes. I'm on the other side of the city. I can get there in 20, you know? So, yeah, yeah it's, it's a whole I different won't. world. I was like, oh, man, we've covered a lot. Are we going to have more to talk about? And then I remembered, you don't even have the 100 anymore. We spent all I mean, this time talking about We haven't really covered that much. I, I guess we Yeah, we yeah, yeah. Covered, we just yeah. covered the history of car shit. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, the that's 100. what we're here for. So now you have a JZS 171 crown. Yeah. The most, you know, su- some people the, would say is the same car. You know? Superior to the it's 100 superior. in every way. Every way, yes. 100%. Tell me, tell me all about the superiority. I mean, I guess like maybe a little biased just because like mine is a VX. But like this, the interior is the biggest thing. Like the interior is like black leather, you know, like the new modern style dash and, you know, gauges, whatever. Like it's just, it's such a nice car to drive around in every day. Like I just enjoy it. Like yeah. the, the, the 100 is cool, but it's still the like 90s cool. JDM style, you know, like plastic and just very basic. This car feels like a new car. Yeah, when you the get interior it is in. not much better than like a A101 Corolla. No. Yeah, exactly. But honestly, the 17, the 17 crown interior does feel like just a, like a step, step down from like the Aristo Celsius interior. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I mean, it it's a weird halfway. Like the the left. Oh, those are, those are the more like luxurious side. So I could see that being, yeah, that making They're sense. Way yeah, it, way. yeah. I mean, it is. It's cool though. You know, it's like. Does yours like have my, a power driver seat and a manual passenger seat? Power both. Power oh, front, okay. like both front and back, and the rear seats are reclining. Oh wow! In, yeah, in that car too. Full leather sunroof. I wonder what that like, car weighs. Uh, I think I. I think it's like this is my car. 30 my car had a manual 50 or something like that like it's heavy or maybe it's 36 37 yeah i don't know probably right around there it's definitely yeah. aristo it's, or like coming up to aristo uh, what about your mark x it's gone the, the mark x is gone yeah i sold yeah, that no, no, car no. i'm just curious if uh like did it have both power fronts oh power? no the mark x the mark x had power front seats yeah it did have power but it was just cloth seats because both was, my 17 and my 18 had power driver manual passenger really yeah no yeah. both both of mine had uh or no you are right my the mark x had a had a manual passenger seat the driver was power manual passenger but yeah, yeah no the the one seven is like fully loaded it's a it's a nice unit. I love driving it. And like with all the suspension, 
I kind of did a complete flip from the chaser. Like the chaser, okay. I handled all the rear suspension and dealt with, like didn't have to do much front wise, but the front, like the yeah. crown, we did everything, you know, like got the short spindles from you, a whole new front end, you know, like uh, new uppers. They're just like factory uh, with like 100 new bush. Yeah. New bushings or whatever, but still like replace the uppers and then the lowers, you know, like tie rods, everything, all brand new bushings. Like, man, that car drives amazing. It feels great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a super nice car. I feel like we don't actually stress this enough on the podcast, which is really funny because it's a serial nine podcast, but how much better everything worked when you put serial nine parts on your car. Like I get it because it sounds like you're eating your own dog food, but like, yeah. every time i get serial nine parts on my car i'm like yo this is way better than yeah. what it was and seriously it kind of sounds like that's what you got going on too is that idea yeah yeah no it's uh it took a little while to get everything dialed in mostly just with like making the wheels fit after doing the lcas um and yeah once i got that dealt with like man that car drives amazing it fits I feel like, like a little it, bit spoiled because, like, yeah, it feels like the Altezza's been completely sort of outfitted, like subframe diff pushing, yeah, every single arm, everything, you know, the AK as soon as it happened for a long time. And, like, I love driving that car. And, like, even recently, I kind of pulled it out for the shop and took it around the, the complex for the first time. And I was like, man, like, the turn-in feels so nice and everything feels so crisp, but, like, to me it, it still doesn't feel harsh you know yeah no like, i you know i i 100 percent agree with you man uh it's hard to explain like i'm trying to think the word to like put on it's like the car just feels like one solid unit like everything works as if it should if it was completely brand new factory like just drives so nice man when you turn the wheel it turns exactly where you want to go even when you hit bumps and stuff like it just absorbs it man they it drives they drive great for being such a big body car you'd think you'd like i don't know rub or like high center or whatever but yeah everything seems to function like really well if we get to go to Schwano this year like i oh, yeah. would really like to take the 17 Man, I would I would love for that to happen 100. percent It'd be very sick to have. If you guys are taking the 17, then I should just take the Blit because then we'd have cars that yes. literally nobody fucking has. That would literally. be so fucking wild. <laughs> I've had this yeah. vision. Like I've thought of. I, I swear to God, I've had this dream like four times this fucking week. Like where it's like all of us at final boat and all of yeah. like in those three cars i was just gonna say chob did say in our podcast he's like it feels like the next big thing will be the crown yeah, you know, yeah. he's like because he saw you know talking about carter's car and stuff and yeah. i i thought that was really interesting and I'm, actually i'm super stoked on the crown i love the jzx everything about it was awesome but I feel like I have so much more enjoyment from the crown just from all the work that's been done to it and getting like a little bit of feedback from it. You know, like it's just like feels good to have this car that you've, you know, put a bunch of work in and it's like working how it's supposed to somewhat, you know, a completed car. Also, it's just like I was super stoked to have a car that is not necessarily very easy for, you know, ev uh, everyone else to, like, obtain and have, like, as a drift car, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the biggest of things for me. Exclusivity. Yeah. I just wanted something that not everyone could have. As soon as the J as soon as everyone started getting 100s, I was like, all right, I'm over this. Get me into Nobody thinks else. this is a Volvo anymore. I need something <laughs> yeah. else that they won't understand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I, I kind of get that, too. Also, and I'm not saying anything against anyone how they build their cars here but it's like yeah once once everybody else gets a hold of something it's very easy to watch people go like ham and just build something off the rails crazy whereas like mm -hmm. it's like oh, you're no longer the outlier which is kind of part of what we do but mm -hmm. um, yeah all right yeah TK. hey i did have a question and i want to touch on it before i forget because i've been Please drinking do. So Caden wrote in, said, hey, Ryan, love the podcast. Just listened to the new episode and noticed you mentioned the next episode. You talked about crowns. That's where Carter comes in. Was wondering hey, hey. what you guys was wondering what you guys thought about the Majestas. Technically, they are a crown yeah. with a V8. And I haven't heard you guys talk about them before. 
And I thought that is true. We spend a lot of time talking about Jay-Z's. We don't talk about the V8, the Toyota V8s a lot. So does anyone here have thoughts on the Majestas, the, the V8s, any of that? Uh, yeah, I feel like I could talk a little bit about it because I, I had the 17. I had a Celsius, which had the 1UZ, and now I have the S190 that has the 3UZ. Yeah, basically, they are a 17 crown, but their suspension is more similar to a 161, 147. Uh, I don't, I've never really driven one sportingly myself. Uh, they have different headlights and different taillights on the 17. Uh, there was, I think there was a 15 Majesta as well. Yeah. Um, the 15 Majesta which actually is looks cool. super yeah. sick. It does look super sick. And like to be able to get the V8 in the, in, in, the 15 Majesta has the same suspension as a JZX 9100. So that's uh, no, I kind think of that, a, I don't know about the Majesta, man. I think that's just oh, really? stuff. I kind of think so, yeah. I kind of think it's 147. I, I kind of thought that was before the 147 came out. No, I don't know. Because 147 was like 94 to 90, 97. Or no, 90. we got to update the whole website. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Majesta, the Majesta is a bit of a weird animal. It's like, yeah, like because they put the V8 in it. With, I've never known what, someone who was like, really keen on getting one they're primarily vip cars they're pretty big you know vip platforms but yeah toyota's weird at that like they will overbuild the shit out of everything so anything that has a v8 has the big suspension uh so they basically took a 17 athlete put the v8 in and then put the 16 aristo suspension in the front so it's not all compatible i mean if you have you know, enough ingenuity, you could just put all the smaller suspension on and just use all the IS or the regular crown stuff. Or you can just get, you know, Aristo stuff. Yeah, it is different. Uh, I don't know about the steering rack, the speed or any of that stuff. But if you did have one, we have uh, knuckles for them now. We have the AK-49s for the 161 and the Majesta. So that would well, be that's awesome. great news. Yeah, I mean, we also have, we also hey, have, uh, we also have hold on. rear suspension and diff pushing and yeah, I mean, we've everything been else for that car as well, yeah. yeah. Uh, hang on, though. Fun fact, Carter uh, grew up, and actually your current house, uh, is across the street from a Crown Majesta owner, or a Crown Majesta owner also grew up across the street from you. Is that yeah, correct? Jesse. Jesse, he doesn't <laughs> live there no more. But yeah. No, I know. He's a grown up. He's got his own house. But yeah, actually, his <laughs> ever, his Majestic just got totaled off. <laughs> oh, no. Don't no. get me wrong. Like, it, I, I actually like like the way they look. Like, they look pretty cool. I really like the, the back end, like how round it is. It doesn't make sense, like, how it looks like, like the way, like, why it looks <laughs> like that. It almost looks like the car is two front ends. But for, for <laughs> it does. But <laughs> no, you're right. Some, no, no. In that some way, right. in some way, it's, it's still kind of like it's, it's like still kind of looks see it from cool. the front. Okay, you know. Yeah. Some people like that. Yeah. Some people like a large posterior. <laughs> that's a, that front. was an 18 Majesta, wasn't it? Well, that's the uh, answer then to what how we feel about Crown Majestas, and they are mm-hmm. nice. They look cool, and I get it. I think my issue with any V8, not with any V8 Toyota, that's uh, that's a radical thing to say. No, I my issue is, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, prior to Kevin's uh, GS, is that uh, the, all the V8 ones, the there was never that much payoff. Like I get it. It was smooth and it was made for a very old man going to a country. Yeah. Club. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I always say that when I, yeah, I mean, that it's just, Celsius, it's a Toyota, Toyota Nist word, like every car is made for the old man driving to the country yeah. club. And they, they don't want you to reply to anybody. Cause I was about to reply to you. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> that's why I was like, what, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> no. They don't want anybody to have any fun, you know, like yeah. my car. Like literally, like my car gets two degrees of slip angle, and it's beeping at you, and oh yeah, locking up the brakes, and it's like, man, like, can I have like just the tiniest, tiniest yeah. modicum of fun? Yeah, yeah. even Please. on it, even like, even that Mark X was kind of like like it was pretty bad too. The second you hit the gas and it like starts to slip, it just caught you from everything, and that shit was so, so fucking annoying, like. And, some t- to and one, the point, one sometimes thing where about, you like, can't even like snow, 
Yeah, yeah like, like you can't even like, move. No, you can't move. Exactly. It's yeah. like you need you need a bit of slip. You need yeah. a bit of momentum. And it's like the wheel slips and it cuts the power for so long that you yeah. lose your momentum and now yeah. you're stuck where you it's were. Like, it's like, it's like three, four seconds before it's like, all right, we'll give you a little bit. And then they're like, no, never mind. only a little never bit. Mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's like 30. Just a taste. Yeah. 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 This is a little yeah. tickle. But, but I, mean, I if think my mom was no. driving that car. It, it would feel appropriate. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But the, there's not, uh, <laughs> there's no way to like, turn it down you can only completely turn it off yeah when the intended consumer no, drives a car it. it's probably great but like <laughs> i said i drove the celsius <laughs> in regina and i feel like at that point carter yeah. you still had the the s chassis everyone was driving really fast fun cars and it's like, yeah but my car can air out and that was like all it could do like it was yeah. a big sofa it's like this like air out look at me hey bro it's a steel later <laughs> yeah we're going drifting yeah it's very we're going, <laughs> honestly it was like there was a couple people that were drifting maybe but like evan and like mike and joel and like all these guys had like cars that they would just like go into the highway and just do like highway pulls like mike's yeah. mike's super that he built like was just the most extensive fucking build in the world. Like he had like three different two J's. One of them was from some like crazy shop out of Texas or some shit like that. Like it was just like so far above and beyond what anyone else was fucking doing in Regina. Like, <laughs> it yeah. was ridiculous. Every time you'd go, like he got it like a, a brand new yeah. paint job, like, and like he had all the extra like carbon pieces on it that were like, painted over you know like it just yeah it was like so much past everything didn't he sell that car 18 grand as well yeah it was, like this, yeah. Like, it was this yeah. wild supra but it was right in that like valley when nobody wanted anything yeah and he just like, gave this supra that, that that car like i i don't know how much he spent but i would probably guess that like he was upwards of maybe like 60 70 grand with like all the parts and work and like he did like two or three different turbos and like back and forth to dyno different places to get it dynoed and this and that like man it was just like it's ridiculous nowadays that car would be like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars or some <laughs> yeah. shit like that like there are a lot <laughs> of those uh yeah, Actually, I remember back, back in the day, there was definitely some weird, crazy shit. Because, I mean, even our buddy used to own literally the Boss Speed GTO, which was like, you know, the the Mitsubishi the GTO. The car. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the yeah. car. And I'm sure there was probably like tens of thousands of hours of development or, you know, all this shit. Like, and then he probably just bought it for like fucking 15 grand or something. Yeah. And I think eventually just like parted it out. But like, yeah, like there's always that sort of thing where... That's the thing, man. If like if you had the money and you knew, you could literally just have a warehouse of Supras oh. and GTRs and like Cam Cam Johns oh, had yeah. a R32 GTR with like RG RG2s or whatever the fuck on it, and I think he paid like ten grand for it. Another one of our friends, Bode, had uh, one that he like <laughs> blew up and sold it to a friend of ours for like a thousand bucks or some shit. Like they they were fully disposable at that point. Yeah, like people yeah. were like just throwing them away. Didn't Evan and you guys crush one with like a front end loader or something? <laughs> that, or was, that was that was Bodes. So he blew yeah. the, the the transmission or something blew up, and the flywheel came through the floor of the fucking car. So mm -hmm. it was like, yeah. So it was like a TL. <laughs> so they bought the car, took everything that they could off of it, glass everything. And then they put like the bucket of a fucking bobcat through the like roof of it or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> just the sent thing, it on its so, way. It's so yeah, funny the to think of that. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, I completely like destroyed and, you know, like sold for dollar for, or just gave away Corolla shells that like were totally fine in hindsight. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to the point, uh, the super owner that we were talking about now owns a GTS Porsche. GT3 RS. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> Carter, you just recently bought a. I did. 
And Fucking I, big I boy pants for, there. You threw, you <laughs> threw that Jay's X100 away? Yeah. Yeah. And actually, all the money from the JZX went into the JZS. <laughs> it, went, <laughs> it went directly from, from one vehicle straight over to Serial 9. And then we <laughs> built a, we built a whole nother car with it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, I picked up a, a Porsche a little I mean, while ago. I mean, that feels ago. like true car guy fashion. Just straight oh, man. One car, yeah. one car. Like, oh, yeah, I sold my car today. Like, Oh, uh, I spent all the money on mods for a car that is not even here yet. Like, yeah, yeah, legit. I, mean, <laughs> I feel so like true. we briefly had that conversation last week about my car, where it was like, okay, if the Aristo got sold and I bought an yeah. ISF, and then I put all the money into the ISF, and then I have to get suspension and all the other stuff, like the money was already gone. Like it wasn't like, oh, yeah. and then you take a little bit and invest in retirement. And you're like, no, no, it's yeah. how do you? immediately put all that money into another thing. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not how. It's very easy how. Oh, yeah. Ah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did the exact same thing with the, like, S14. When I parted out the S14, all the money from the S14 went into the went into the JZX just to, like, get, you know, like, better coilovers and the wheels that I wanted and this and that, whatever. Like, so it, it's just a, a ripple effect that just keeps, keeps going no matter well, the thing is, like, you're not selling that doing. car. Like, that's the whole reason you're selling that car, so that you can yeah. like <laughs> get to the next thing. It's like exactly if, if in some yeah. world you didn't need to sell that car to do the things there that you wanted to do, you just keep that car and yeah. do those things anyway. Yeah, I'll yeah. tell you, I'll tell you who's selling those cars and then cashing out. Bunch and of tourists. Retiring? That's who. Yeah, oh, they're tourists. Yeah, no, you're 100 right. <laughs> and now was... you. Mike and Evan all have Porsches. So how long until all the other guys in Regina get Porsches? I feel like Gellner's eyeing them up. I feel like Gosh. BJ's looking for Porsches. Gellner bought my fucking money crown. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. 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 I bought a one eight crown. It's been in Japan for the last like fucking three months, like waiting. Oh, like to you haven't shipped it yet. So got to Did Vancouver you? like a week or two ago. And then, and then, yeah, Jason, I've, I've been like trying to get rid of it because at the same time I was dealing with all this Porsche bullshit, which was just fucking oh, making me the... spiral. The one that has, it has like modelista, like, yeah, the again. modelista kid and the sunroof yeah. and the sunroof, yeah, black leather, yeah, like top of, the, top of the line. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I'm Carter's very happy. Yeah, Carter's I'm, back. I'm not very happy about having to get rid of it, but whatever. I mean, Old hot hands Gellner is gonna it, have it now. Does it does it crack dash? Uh, it has a dash mat in it. Oh, so you don't know. Yeah, it's got Which, a crack yeah. dash. If it's yeah. got a dash it has mat. a it has a yeah it has a dash mat. But yeah, yeah it ha- I, and then I have the dash mat can't hide the cracks because most of the cracks are on the like the other side. That the dash oh, doesn't okay. hide exactly. It's oh, it's good, good. I, yeah. it's actually a full mat that goes all the way across right down to. It's like I've it never droops, seen it. It droops down. Yeah, it droops down. Oh wow. Yeah, it's like some custom made one or some shit like that. So it's pretty to hide yeah. all the cracks. That, no, <laughs> maybe. But we're yeah. also maybe they knew it cracked and they got this crazy custom mat so it yeah. would never crack. Maybe. And it yeah. isn't right, that. Right. Yeah. Either way, either way, I'm not happy about getting rid of it. Like I have those um Weds Vishnu sitting in the that fucking garage. Oh really? What size? Uh they're twenty <laughs> by nine point five, twenty by ten point five. Yeah. Uh three point five lips, four point five lips. Uh, they're like that me. I don't know what that like, means, but like it outer pretty, outer yeah, lips. No. Like three point five. Yeah, those that no, no. Sounds, yo, like please let me get you those. Yeah, off that. So yeah. they're like, um, no, no, I already said like, just let me get those for me. Yeah. I mean, they're, they would, if it's, if probably, it's three and a half, if it's three and a half inches of dish on the front that's and, 75, half, that's, and they're, and they're 19 inch wedge crying day fish news. They're 20, 20, 20 inch. And oh, the yeah. baller is come fuck. on. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> let me buy this from me. Yeah. yeah. I swear you let, messaged let me like, Kevin like three weeks. Yeah, please. Like three weeks ago being like, so I hear you have some wheels in your garage. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Kevin did. I have a I, I literally I, no, like let me get those. Yeah, yeah. That's a good, oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Like, 
That's like dream wheel for me. Like I know they're yeah, I, like Vishnu's for. Uh, I sent them to you. Take them off my hands. I got I got <laughs> money burning a hole in my pocket. <laughs> All right, done deal. <laughs> Actually, you've driven a lot of different types of Toyotas, which is interesting, or owned even. So you had the Mark X. Yep. Which you did not care for. Yeah, I like I. I will say this: the car is fucking bulletproof. Like I put on like fifteen thousand k in under six months like i drove that car fucking all over the place everywhere i took it down to whitefish and back like oh yeah man that car had never failed me once but it didn't have cruise which was a bummer uh and i know whatever like japanese cars only do what like their cruise is only 105 or some shit like that or 100 yeah eight whatever it is but still like just like being able to take your foot off the pedal at some points would be nice when you're doing, you know, like eight plus hours. So yeah. if it had cruise control, just a little I, pop rush. Yeah. If it had <laughs> I was going to say you should get the serial nine uh, cruise control mod, which is. Yeah, we got to start selling that. Kevin wedges a stick like a, a uh, an adjustable rod, rod between. It's a hood prop. The seat, adjustable a hood prop. prop. How does that Between. even work? Because like, like, doesn't your like pedal like fluctuate in speed sometimes? Like, oh, totally. That's what I mean. It's not, it's not control. It's throttle control. Okay. So like, <laughs> so like, if you, if you go downhill, you start really going, and oh, if you yeah. go uphill, you start like not going. Yeah. Just chugging <laughs> back a little bit. Yeah. But then down, like yeah. on, on like because if you have like a bucket seat, it has like a completely vertical forward facing wall and that's where yeah. i jam it so like you can just push it slowly lower and uh, that okay. increases the throttle and then gotcha. you can pull it up a little bit with your hand and that oh, decreases it, yeah so like, it's a, you got it's like not a whole perfect. thing going on oh yeah no, yeah yeah it's not <laughs> dude but no the um, mark x good car wish it had more features but it was a good, hmm. good solid car. It was a pretty bare bones car that one. Also, I didn't know I, that because I, so I feel like, like the Mark X is like the is the continuation of the X chassis, and yeah. it's kind of bare bones. It's supposed to be sportier, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, seems it like, doesn't come with a good engine. Yeah, it comes with a smaller engine. But then I was like, is it maybe is it just like the base model compared to like the Crowns and shit like that? You know, like because it is kind of bare bones. Like it had cloth seats and. Yeah, not not all the extra shit that all the other cars have. So I don't know. It was a nice car, but I wouldn't buy another one. Yeah, <laughs> like I every like time I, a resounding review. Okay, because I would always compare it to like Kevin's Crown, and I was always like, Crown was at the shop, and the Mark yeah. X was there beside it, and I was like, yeah. man, like the Crown is so much nicer than the Mark <laughs> X, like in every way. <laughs> But uh, yeah, because I also like I feel like I also let you and Ryan drive that car. Like I just yeah. let anybody drive that car. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like I there there was a while where it was insured and I just led it at the shop and I was like, anybody, anyone, just take this car for the weekend. Yeah. Take it overnight. Just drive this yeah. car if you want to. Go experience it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's just a the old workhorse. Like yeah, I love eighteen crowns. I love how they look. I I really like, yeah. I, I even that car. Like man, I love that car. It was great. Yeah. But then yeah, like having having the GS, which is the same suspension, like essentially as that car, but like just with a different engine. I don't know. It's just like I do. I do like the GS quite a bit more. That's a big unit too. The, G, it, the GS. <laughs> I have experienced that. Like, you know, I got to park, I got to park this thing, <laughs> parallel park this thing every night yeah. <laughs> in my neighborhood. Yeah. And there's a bunch of times where I'm like, yeah. I can't fit that spot. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's a lot. A pretty normal size spot. Yeah. Yeah. You know what a hey. big, big unit like that needs <laughs> is some 20 yeah. inch fish yeah. shoes on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you can collectively do this. So everything that is post Jay Z engine Toyota, so all of these cars yeah. that we've talked yeah. about, yeah, could you make a ranking list of which one is best, like what is the most intriguing to like the most least intriguing. desirable, or like the one that you yeah, want yeah. the most? So like yeah, you got like know. a GS, we got yeah. that we've had a Mark X list talked about, we had the Crown. 
Crown yeah. Majestas. Uh, I don't know what grounds, else fits in 18 there. Grounds. I, don't yeah. know, I just bought a BMW, so fuck all those Toyota things. <laughs> oh, yeah. we went so long without you doing this. DM Gerard and congratulate him on getting rid of one BMW and getting another BMW. Hey, remember when I asked the question about ranking the Toyotas and then we just... Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I, I, mean, I honestly don't even remember that at all. I would buy a GS. That's, that's... A GS? I might buy an IS. I don't know. Yeah, I kind of want one. IS Actually... ISF, oh, I, I, ISF would be I, sick. So, so for ISF me, is number one. What about aesthetically? Uh, aesthetically, I think the IS does. Oh, I mean, I'm still talking next gen, like the next gen. Yeah, yeah. After, not yeah. like new, new. I'm talking like not like new, new. Kevin's yeah. GS gen and like the Mark X gen and a little bit. Yeah. Later. Like what's available to us now from Japan? Let's say yeah. that. Isn't right, it two hundred four? I, I wouldn't two hundred four crown. Yeah, 200 crowns of Elbaya. 200? They look pretty good. Even that, like, the newest gen one, like, the like those cars, they look fucking amazing. They do. Like, I follow and a couple guys nice from Japan that, like, have them. I can't remember what the hell his name is, but there was this one guy that had, like. Haku? Yeah. <laughs> some, yeah. And it was, like, the craziest, craziest build. But, like, fuck those headlights. Like, how they, like, swoop they go up, up the side of yeah. the hood. Like, yeah. they look so sick. Those cars are so sick. I would buy one of those. I was like fully on the one A crown, but like the nah, maybe one of those. I do. I love the one A crown too, but like yeah, like that whole right. interior is just you, trash. It's yeah. fucking the, that's the, the, the problem. Man. Just, it, also, like the problem with the three GS is like the dash is is pretty trash. Honestly, yeah. like I, I'm yeah. not afraid to admit it. It sucks to admit it. But like it reminds me of the G thirty five a little bit in like texture and overall appearance, but maybe not in like like actual quality of the material. The the G thirty five dash felt like you know like very plasticky, but has the exact same appearance of this dash. But if this one feels like much richer or whatever, mm-hmm. if you will. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like the anyway the like the like one ninety. GS interior, yeah, I don't know. It just feels like a bit of a step back from the yeah, the one sixty one interior. Yeah. It's not as luxurious. And same thing, like the UCF twenty interior and like the one sixty one interior, almost feel like like the pinnacle Toyota interiors, if you will. They're not nice, but they're really like good. Like I do like. I mean, the, it's not the, that they're the not. I mean, I don't know. Dash. Like, I, dude, I love it. Like, I, I don't think there's anything about the the UCF twenty or the sixteen default, really. No, no, no. I mean, they're they're yeah, they're they're amazing for their era. It's just like in today's day and age, they are definitely dated. Yeah, yeah you're not getting like touch, really, really touch screen good. or any of that stuff. Yeah. But like, yeah. yeah, like the whoa, whoa, whoa. the sixteen the has a touch screen. It's just garbage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, does it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mine has a touch screen. Yeah. Mine has a touch screen. It's fucking yeah. wild and weird. Like. <laughs> um. But yeah. So, anyways, to your question, Ryan, is I actually did go through and was like, "Yo, what am I gonna buy?" And I looked at all the Toyotas and I was like, "Yo, two hundred crown." I was like, "Man, like, to me, the like reward of owning a Toyota that looks cool but drives super shitty." is mm-hmm. not worth it. I wouldn't buy a Toyota. No. 100% That's I would fair. buy it like a G37 because we can get the G37s now. Yeah. So with the seven-speed auto, and they're actually priced really well. Like So like G37 sedan, uh, or you can get a the Fuga, like the Y51 Fuga, which is like a beautiful car with the, either the 3.7 or the V8. And it's a Nissan, so you know that shit gets sideways. You know that shit's not going to like bark at you. All this stuff is the same as a 370Z or 350Z. So it's like, yeah. Or hey, a BMW Gerard, like, is also a driver's car. Whoa, you know what I mean? Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. BMW. Remember when I asked you a multiple choice question and then you just scratched out all the multiple choice <laughs> and then filled in your own fucking random <laughs> answer? Like, oh, that's a yeah, on the, on the Scantron, like, on the Scantron yeah. you just got a zero, buddy. I wasn't the ask of what would you get instead of a Toyota, Gerard. I said rank them. 
I will give you a list of what I've jotted down, and then you can agree or disagree, but we'll start there. Number one, <laughs> ISF. Available. I love it. Number two, I have the 200 crown. I would disagree. Uh, 200 crown. Oh, wait, wait. What are we taking? Are this, are the, what are we choosing? Or You're we just making a, no, make a Reasonable list of the top. That are, oh, 100%, 200 crown. Yeah. 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 Okay. Number three, the three GS. Yes, 100%. That would be number two for me. Yeah. Number two for Kevin is a three GS. I will accept that as well. Oh, we're doing order. Take... Oh, okay, okay. So number one's the ISF. No, so not So number for me. two is okay. What is it for the, you? This is why you make up your own fucking answers. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> I was trying to say earlier, I was trying to say earlier. I like the ISF on paper, but aesthetically, it doesn't do it for me. Like not even a bit. Like yeah. Okay, like, so which like one? Not even. I prefer the 3GS over the over the ISF. All right, uh, the 3GS. But I think I between the 200 crown and the IS and the GS, the the GS, I'd say it's probably tie, because I think the crown can look better, but the GS has a very unique look. Right, Carter. What are your thoughts? <clears throat> What's that? What do you choose? So number <laughs> Jesus Christ, at number Google's one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. IS, IS, I'm looking at another fucking car. Yeah, exactly. No, so what I just no, said, be... no yeah. Ah. The, no, the ISF and then the 200 crown and then the 3GS. Okay. That's Ryan's so Carter. Opinion. What's your That's opinion? my opinion. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. No, I. For like modern, you're talking? Yeah. Above yeah. the 1JZ car. Yeah. No, I would. I like the ISFs. I do. I also really like. I don't know. There's something about it that I like. I'm just like very intrigued by the the 200 crown. I don't know. Maybe it's the like digital dash or like the fact that like some of them are hybrid, which is fucking hilarious. Like, <laughs> you can mean, just, like yeah. The craziest part about those cars is the factory arrow. The arrow. Is yeah. Literally like that. The arrow is like the walled kit on those cars. Like I've seen so many of them with the like walls and man, they look so sick. Like they look I'm just fucking talking about even just the factory arrow. The oh yeah, no the fat the factory arrow looks amazing, yeah. but like even the aftermarket shit just like man, every air like every lip kit I've seen for those cars, they look awesome. They look great. Even just like factory, no wheels, no nothing. Yeah, I yeah. could I, I I'd probably oh man, that's tough. Yeah. I'd probably have to say two hundred two hundred count All right. for number one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What? What? What are we talking got, about, now, Ryan? Got I can't even get you guys to get through this fucking list. <laughs> Dude, where does shit. the LS? Because where does we the LS drunk, so we one. all got drunk, and now you ruined it. <laughs> Gerard's not drunk. He's just Gerard. I'm yeah. like shotgun a beer right now. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Where? Where does the LS land on the list? Nowhere on my list. LS four thirty. Yeah, where are you gonna or put LS that? Or LS four sixty? Sure. Any, four any s- LS any. Say the four sixty and then the four thirty. Nowhere, nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. Okay. Yeah. It's funny because. So, like, yeah, I don't know. I I like. I'm just like, what's the word? Bitter with Toyota. It's like I love these cars so <laughs> much, and then I just then I drove a Beamer and I was like, fuck! I, literally, my entire automotive career is making these cars drive like, like. A normal car, but I do I do think the new cars drive a lot better. Like the <laughs> 18 crown, and... the beer. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, like all of the new cars, <laughs> the next gen cars drive much better. Like, even the shitty 18 <laughs> crown that Kevin had. Why is Gerard unfazed? Is this is uh, I'm gonna say this thing <laughs> because I'm trying to. I mean, you know. All right. He's trying they to keep us on schedule here. <laughs> if, okay. yeah, oh, so except for when he tells us about a Fuga. The, the whole yeah, thing well, yeah, is, yeah. okay, so Toyota, <laughs> amazing looking car. 200 crown, looks great. Interior, pretty decent. Could it be a good car? Yes. Does it have a good engine? Yes. And then Toyota just like turns everything down to like fucking two. It's like, you want to have fun? No. You want to fucking do a burnout? Maybe. No. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, what is the car for? Like, it, it's to get you from point A to point B, like, in an extremely boring ass manner. It's like, <laughs> yeah. driving fucking enjoyment? No. 
Like, get the fuck out of here. It's a nice looking car, but like, that's yeah, it. I, I will give you that. It, visually, you get it, but that's about it. You can't do anything else in it. One thing, right? one thing I will say about this, and it might be controversial, is like visually, sometimes you don't even get it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Like, they're yeah. not super no. – ever. Toyota's no, not no. known for doing exciting designs. And yeah. it's only because the, what they're you, highly, what getting, highly modified what you're and getting we know what they can rely, like. What you're getting is reliability. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, like – And and, that's and like, the thing. if you're, like a, like, a super, super car guy, maybe you can deal with a bit yeah. of, like, routine maintenance. Yeah. You so, know? for example, Carter, the Fuga – I mean, yeah, I or can't. The, or, or the or the <laughs> Skyline, like three seventy three G thirty seven or whatever. You yeah. can tune those cars. You go, you buy a fucking NIST tune or whatever ECU. You flash yeah. it. It does burbles. You get twenty horsepower. You put fucking headers on it. You get thirty horsepower. Those yeah. cars can make three hundred at the wheels. Na. Yeah. So we didn't really land on anything. I feel like the consensus is though that the ISF is maybe got voted at the top of the list. And then the 200 crown was second on the list. And then, because Kevin, you got mildly outvoted. And then the 3GS. Let's see, let's see that. I mean, and I guess between the good. between the 2GR and the V8, I guess they kind of make around like the same power and et cetera. Yeah. Um, I've heard people say that the 2GR is faster. 2GR with the seven speed is quicker. Yeah. Than the yeah. like three GR with the six speed, which makes sense. You have more time to be in a more precise power band, but but realistically, like buy those cars and not really do anything to them, so you have to have them in stock form. It is kind of way cooler to have a V8. Yeah. So yeah, to me, it also feels like the V8 is easier to modify though. Like there's more aftermarket support for the three U one U than there is for but specifically in that chassis GR. i feel so, like also like the you the v8 would be like a little more sought after would it not like if you I, wanted yeah, to do so. like if yeah. you wanted to like you're not gonna put like a nice exhaust on the like two gr i mean they, they sound pretty good they, they do sound, they don't, crown, they would, do not sound but not bad, if you had a gs you know what i mean it's like if you got <laughs> yeah. the gs 350 that's the present model but the 200 <laughs> yeah. that's all it sounds like yeah, I guess. I'm just like I'm just thinking yeah, like it's a weird in my mind I would be like, oh like I'd rather have like a nice little like rumble of a V eight yeah. oh, over the yeah. other, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's it a hundred percent. So like yeah, yes, then the V eight hypothetically also easier to switch to a manual. Yep. Or did yeah. I make that up? Yeah, okay. No, nope, yeah. that's the, okay. you, right. All right, this yeah. is the last <laughs> question and it's just for, for for Carter. Okay. Because someone messaged me that listens to the podcast and they actually said, hello, not a podcast question, but a Dodo Ryan B question. Oh, Carter. So I'm going to ask you, Carter is Tumblr's pizza as hype as it sounds. Tumblr's pizza has the best sauce in Regina. As far as I know, I also haven't had Tumblr's pizza in a long fucking time, but from what I remember, it was nice. It was like square cut style pizza, but they still cut it like normal style. Good shit. Like in a triangle, yeah. Yeah, I'm into it. So best sauce. okay, best sauce. Best sauce. Best sauce. So I had a shit. very long, elaborate answer to the question. Uh, I will say this came from uh, Glocks, and I appreciated the question because I really went in on it, and yeah. they were like, "That's more than I expected to get." For people that don't know Regina, where I'm from, and Carter lives, has Man. a very specific style of pizza. Dude, it's been in the is, news like mad lately. Yeah, about it. Tumblr's <laughs> also was like this wild place where you could go after hours and like rage. Like I don't know if you knew that about. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that, Ben. I've like, gone and done like karaoke at Tumblr. Oh so. yeah, and like they 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 used to hold like after fucking parties, like after hour parties there, right inside the restaurant. Shit was wild. Why was Tumblr's in the news? What were they in the news about? Just no. I feel like Saskatchewan 
having its own specific type of pizza yeah. has, has been in the news lately. It is a very specific type of pizza that is it's so It's like some hard. sort of like Chicago-esque pizza. Yeah, it, yeah kinda. Like I, a little like, bit. Like, Chicago's I, like, got I've, more I've sauce I've literally seen it. it in the news lately. Yeah. yeah it's kind it's of like... like a it's like a deli Chicago. sandwich, but yeah. yeah, it's like a deli sandwich made into a pizza. That's a great <laughs> way to explain it. It's like if you if you were like, I want a pizza, but like just add extra, 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 extra amounts of meat of onto everything. it. <laughs> of everything. Then that's what you get. Yeah, like there's no way you're eating a regina style pizza and the crust isn't like fairly soggy you know like oh, yeah. no longer yeah yeah like because it's just like there's so much greasy food on top of it but i mean even all right well how sick is that dashboard jesus the- christ you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. have to make sure you like you pick the right type of pizza like if you get like a meat lovers you have to remember that there's going to be like Pounds of meat on yeah, there. Like, yeah, it's yeah, fucking, fucking huge. <laughs> and like, if you get all dressed, like, yeah, the same thing, it's but a, with every yeah. type of vegetable. Like, it's a fucking yeah. A yeah they, they take they take it to the extremes. Yeah, yeah. It's like over they and ain't above. playing. Hey, yeah. and with learning about pizza from Regina, I think that's an excellent place for us to end the podcast. I want to. So, go. Carter. Where? The tumblers. Tumblers? <laughs> Want to go there? Yeah. Th- hey, Carter. Okay. Thanks for hanging out with us, and yeah. thanks yeah. everyone who wrote in. Yes, and, thanks uh, for having thank me you. on here. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for Carter for joining us. Thank you, people, Perfect. for yeah. listening. I'm happy to be on it. It was good seeing you or talking to you guys and chatting. Yeah, I'm fucking sure, soaked. Sure. It's fucking been too oh, long, man. No. I, yeah, I miss. I, I can't miss wait you, dude, to drive seriously. with you again. It's gonna be yeah. so sick. Yeah, yeah I gotta, I gotta get driving and or simming because I, I need practice, like motherfucker. It's been like decades since I've drifted, so yeah. Well, it hasn't. It's been you know a couple of years. You'll, <laughs> it'll come back to you real quick. All right, all right, man. Peace out. Bye, okay, bye you everybody. Right. Bye. bye. Thanks for listening to Serial Podcast 9.